Yeah. Meantime, President Biden taking questions from reporters in yeah, Bali. Sure. Let's listen in. Mr. President, um, uh, you met with President Xi and you met with him face to face after he had unquestionably consolidated his power at home. So now that you've met with him face to face, how do you assess um, his sort of posture towards the United States now? And did you find him personally to be more confrontational or more conciliatory and willing to compromise? Neither and yes. Can you I, yes, I didn't find him more confrontational or more conciliatory. I found him the way he's always been direct and straightforward. And uh, do I think he's willing to compromise on various issues? Yes. I think he understands that, uh, look, I, I think, how can I say this tactfully? Um, I think the, uh, I think the election held in the United States, which still leaves a little bit uncertain, uh, has sent a very strong message around the world that the United States is ready to play. The United States is, uh, you know, the Republicans who survived, along with the Democrats, uh, are of the view that uh, we're going to stay fully engaged in the world and that we, in fact, uh, know what we're about. Uh, and so I, I, I don't get any sense that there's a more or less confrontation. We were very blunt with one another about places where we disagreed or where we were uncertain of each other's position, and we agreed we'd set up, and we, we did, mechanisms whereby we would meet in detail with our the, the key people in each of our administrations to discuss how we could resolve them, or how, if they weren't resolved, on, on what basis were they not resolved. Um, Sebastian Smith, the, so, uh, uh, the uh, AFP. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Really close. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't usually talk that loud. Does the retaking of Kherson in Ukraine signal a turning point in the war, in your opinion, um, that the Ukrainians, where the Ukrainians could realistically pursue their ultimate goal of expelling the Russians completely, uh, including retaking Crimea? If so, does the U.S. intend to support and facilitate that goal, as you've been doing so far with their other goals? Or would you perhaps see Kherson as a different kind of uh, inflection point, basically a good time to start negotiating now that they've got a, some more strength than they had you know, a few weeks ago? Thank First you. of all, it was a significant, significant victory for Ukraine. Significant victory. And uh, I can do nothing but uh, applaud the courage, determination, and capacity of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian military. I mean, they have really been amazing. And uh, I, uh, I think it's hard to tell at this point exactly what it means in terms of, uh, but I've been very clear that we're going to continue to provide the capability for the Ukrainian people to defend themselves. And we are not going to engage in any negotiation. There's no, nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. It's a decision Ukraine has to make. I think you're going to see things. Uh, slow down a bit because of the winter months and the inability to move as, uh, as easily around the, the country. But uh, I think it remains to be seen exactly what the outcome will be, except that I'm confident that Russia will not occupy or defend uh, uh, Ukraine as they intended from the beginning. Um, uh, you're listening there to President Biden uh, fielding questions from reporters this after the first meeting between Chinese President Xi Jinping and President Biden since President Biden took office, also since the pandemic. Uh, earlier, there was a readout that was given from the White House on this meeting. That's right. Again, uh, talking about a number of things, including climate change, global macroeconomic stability, debt relief, health security, global food security, and even Taiwan. With a little bit more details on what was spoken about, our senior correspondent John Huddy is live in Indonesia, again, where those two leaders just met. John, good morning. Yeah, and those topics you were just talking about are really kind of the focal point of what's happening here and some of the topics at the G20. But uh, President Biden, uh, 
when he dipped out of him, was speaking specifically about Ukraine retaking the Kherson region, um, uh, which was Russian-occupied territory, which is a major victory for Ukraine. And speaking of which, speaking of Russia and the war in Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin is not here. He is not attending the G20 summit. Instead, in his place is Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who you may recall walked out of the uh, the summit of foreign ministers uh, several months back, having to do with G20. So, you know, whether that happens, whether there's a re repeat of that remains to be seen. But today's meeting was definitely an extraordinary and incredibly important meeting, the first face-to-face -face between President Biden uh, and uh, uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping since President Biden took office uh, two years ago. It was a three-hour meeting, uh, and they discussed a range of topics, but specifically, as the president was talking about in that press conference, which started about 45 minutes late, right around 35, 40 minutes late, uh, he was talking about Taiwan specifically, and, and he said, by the way, uh, both leaders uh, spoke candidly about their thoughts on a range of issues, but notably about Taiwan, specifically uh, laying out in detail that the U.S.'s one-China policy remains unchanged, but that the U.S. opposes any unilateral changes, according to the president, and also a White House readout um, on the meeting to the status quo by either side, and that America has an interest, according to both the president and other officials, in the maintenance of peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait, but more so that the U.S. objects to China's increasingly aggressive, quote-unquote, actions towards Taiwan. Uh, I'm going to be going, just a kind of footnote here, I'm going to be going to Taiwan in a couple days. This is a meeting that is being followed closely, this summit being followed closely by officials in Taiwan. I've been people speaking to people on the ground there. So obviously what comes out of this, if there's any, any uh, lasting agreements that come out of this. And uh, again, that remains unseen to be seen. But uh, that's something that's being followed very closely in Taiwan. One final note, you guys, is that Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who joined, he was in the meeting as well, along with the president and other U.S. officials and Chinese officials, will be going to China to follow up on this uh, this discussion and uh, the ongoing discussions, guys. Back right. to you. John Huddy live there in Bali, Indonesia, with a wrap of that meeting between China and U.S. leaders there. John, thank you.